Segment four, dismantling self-government. Again, Tom, from Dismantling America, quote, nothing so epitomizes President Obama's contempt for American values and traditions as ramming two bills, the stimulus package and the health care bill, this would be, through Congress in his first year, each bill more than a thousand pages long, too fast for either to be read, much less discussed, close quote. Stimulus package, the health the care bill, actually, I looked this up, came to more than 2,000 pages. Yes. On the other hand, the American people elected Barack Obama. They gave him big Democratic majorities in both the House and the Senate. Why shouldn't Barack Obama and his Democratic allies enact whatever they want as they want? Oh, whatever they want is one thing. As they want is something else. As they want means circumventing the whole political system of the country that's meant to safeguard you know, a self-governing country. If you, ne if, you don't, if you never learn what, 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 what kind of laws are being passed, then you've lost a, a great deal of your ability to influence what happens uh, to, to the people who rule. I mean, the thing that uh, this whole business with uh, rush, rushing these bills through, it reminds me, the only thing I can find in parallel in history is the Norman conquerors who would publish their laws in England in French for an English-speaking nation. Dismantling America once again. What are the Beltway politicians buying with all the hundreds of billions of dollars they are spending? They are buying what politicians are most interested in, power. Mm -hmm. Explain that notion. There are things that the government is authorized to do under the Constitution and other things that they're not authorized to do. But by simply spending a vast amount of money, you acquire the right to do them. For example, you can, you can fire the head of General Motors simply because you spent all that money buying uh, or rescuing General Motors. Uh, there are all kinds of, of, of uh, programs that the federal government imposes on the states, which they have no authority to do, but they impose them because they, they make the receipt of federal money contingent on doing what they tell you in Washington. And so the powers that were set out in the Constitution and limited become expanded by this process. Now, I mentioned that we had, we've had some questions for you submitted from people who follow the show on Twitter and Facebook. Here's one from a, a fellow called Albert Fuchs on Facebook. And he points, I'll paraphrase because it's a little bit long here. Uh, Milton Friedman said, a major reason for the growth of government is that special interests are concentrated, but the general interest is diffuse. And Tocqueville warned that American democracy would be in danger when the public learned it could use the ballot box to vote itself money. Yeah. Now, both of these get at what you were talking about just a moment ago. But both of these are structural points. They have, th it has been the case since the Constitution was enacted that special interests are concentrated and the general interest is diffuse, or that politicians could, dis could, could in effect, purchase votes. Mm, yes. Why do we have the problem now? What has happened in recent Oh, good, recent very good decades? question. Because, because one of the constraints are the values of the public. And when the values of the public are constantly eroded uh, in the schools uh, and in the press, elsewhere, uh, then these, these other tendencies can, can have a wider field of play. Mm -hmm. So what's a good index for the values of the public? Would you say, would you say for example, that it might be federal federal spending or federal debt, where for two centuries you get a fairly flat, slowly climbing line, goes up during the Civil War, comes back down, and then in the s beginning about in the 70s, it just takes off. Yes. So it's not FDR, it's not the Great Deal, it's not the 30s, it's the 70s? Is well, that you, when, well, 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 when you, do you, things you, you, begin to go well, catastrophically wrong? I, I, would, I, would say, uh, I, would, I would say it was the Great Depression. Most people are unaware that prior to the 1930s, the federal government never intervened in the economy to get us out of a recession. The, the, people, the, the economy recovered on its own and kept going. Uh, but FDR really broke down a great deal of, of, of that sense that, uh, of independence. I mean, there was a time I think most Americans would have felt insulted uh, to have it thought that they wanted somebody else to pay their medical bills. They don't feel so insulted anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. This is um, what I'm trying to get at. This, um, on the one hand, you've got an elite that is effectively engaging in a slow motion hijacking of America. That's yeah. a, a crude way, but yeah. one way of putting it. But at the other hand, you've got more and more Americans who either like the idea of being hijacked, yeah. are too worn out to fight it anymore. I'm trying to f to get your sense of 
the extent to which the public itself is is um, oh yeah is dispirited. Well, the the, the ideas of the '60s, the idea that if uh, you had a grievance, you didn't have to obey the law. Historian Paul Ray of Hillsdale College. He he grants. We did a shoot with Paul Ray, and he grants a great deal of what you've been saying here, Tom. But now listen to Paul Ray. Quote, the political moment in which we live is a moment of great, great hope, close quote. How so? Because by overreaching so dramatically, President Obama has roused the American people to reclaim their old liberties. The Obama administration, Paul Ray argues, this is a quotation, is, quote, a gift to the friends of liberty, close quote. <laughs> I hope he is right and that I am wrong. And you don't, are, are you encouraged by the Tea Party, by the polls that show that? Oh, yes, oh. yes. The, but there is such a thing as a point of no return. And I think then the real question is whether he can take us there. And that's, that's why I think that the uh, fall 2000, uh, 2010 elections are, uh, are in my judgment, uh, pr pr one of the most, if not the most important election we've ever held. All because right. if he doesn't get stopped in, the, in, the, in this fall's election, uh, I don't know how he'll ever be stopped. Um, for one thing, when people talk about his falling in the polls, he's still in the 40s. If he can somehow make millions of illegal immigrants legal and voters before 2012, uh, he can get a second term. And I, and I doubt if there's, I, I see that as a point of no return. So getting some substantial portion of the 12 million illegal immigrants in this country, the vote, yes. that would be a, a direction step toward the point of no return. Yes. I'm trying, domestically, what, what other... Is Obamacare... Obamacare is reversible, or at least its ill effects can be contained. It all comes down to November 2010. Oh, this year. If, if, it's not, if it's not stopped now, it won't be stopped. All right. So November 2nd, 4th, I can't remember which is Election Day, you have one specific date in American history which you can name right now mm -hmm. that you consider actu absolutely crucial. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's almost like the great military battles, you know, Charles Mar 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 Markell at the uh, at the tours. Yes, 732. Yes. I actually looked that up just yesterday yes, for a yes. separate reason. Or the siege of Vienna in 1532. You know, had those things gone the other way, it would be a totally different world today. We're into segment five, which I had in my notes titled "The Point of No Return." You mentioned in dismantling America such a point in foreign policy. Let me quote you, Tom. Iran is advancing step by step toward nuclear weapons. While the Europeans wring their hands and the United Nations engages in leisurely discussion, when Osama bin Laden has nuclear weapons, the choice will be between knuckling under and watching American cities blasted off the face of the earth. That is the point of no return, and we are drifting toward it. Yes. Close quote. Nothing you've seen since you wrote that causes you to reconsider or no. mute your views. No. I was appalled earlier this year when the... I think it was uh, Gates or someone else in the Pentagon, uh, leaked the fact that there were no contingency military plans for stopping Iran from getting nuclear weapons. And now recently, there have been some talk that there, that there are now plans. Mm -hmm. Now, I have no idea whether that means that there really are plans or whether they see an election coming and they'd better create the impression that they have more plans. Because they, they've covered themselves very well because they have international conferences over Iran. They have resolutions in the U.S. These are, these, are, these are what I call elaborate ways of doing nothing. Well, we've got, uh, let me quote to you, Michael Barone, the journalist, you know Michael yes. Barone, he, this is just from a couple of days ago. Uh, quote, Times, Time Magazine's Joe Klein and the American interests Walter Russell Mead suggested to me that the Obama, Ed, Obama administration is seriously considering a military strike against Iran. Now comes further evidence in an opinion article in the Washington Post by Stephen Simon and Ray Takei. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Simon worked in Bill Clinton's National Security Council, and Takei is described as a former advisor to the Obama administration. Their article takes seriously the possibility that the president will order such an attack. And your answer to that is, that could be nothing but cheap leaking. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. All right. The, in fact, he doesn't have to do that. All he has to do is not interfere if the Israelis want to do it. Uh, I saw some place where uh, Saudi Arabia has indicated that the Israelis could fly over Saudi Arabia to get there. And it's ironic that uh, they, they would have to go around Iraq and fly over Saudi Arabia because the American planes patrol Iraq and presumably would shoot down the Israeli planes on their way to Iran. 